You received a call from an inmate at the Department of Corrections. This call will be recorded and monitored. If you wish to block any future calls of this nature, dial 7 now. To accept this call, press 5 now. To decline this call, hang up. Well, hello there, zombie. Yes, yeah, I've been watching the news. I, I see all that stuff that's going on with the transgender community. And you being in that position, what do you think about this whole thing? Yep, yep, I agree. The, you know, it's just like uh, anything out there. You know, if a person is a doctor, spends all his time you know, going to school, practicing, internship, you know, the whole nine yards and uh, is out there as a successful doctor, it's kind of a stab in the back to have somebody run around and say, I'm a doctor who really isn't and actually somehow conned his way into practicing and and receiving the accolades, that's that's not good because, you know, this person went through a lot of trouble and, a lot, and took a lot of time out of his life to become a doctor and is doing everything legally. And uh, those guys out there who pretend to be trans, it, it it's wrong. And it's making you guys look bad. Yeah, and, and that's one of the issues that I'm discussing with folks, too. When uh, you are trying to establish yourself and nobody believes you. And once again, that's based on those people who are fake. Well, yeah, you know, at least you're in a male prison. And from what I can tell, you're you're holding your own. You're doing pretty good, considering all the odds are against you. You uh, you are real. You are actually attracted to women, and so putting you in the women's prison would not be a good idea. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I've heard. I've heard that too. But you know, there there it's just, it's a mix. There's good looking people and ugly folks and mean people. And then, you know, you have the, the lesbians in there. But you went from a female to a male and it's because you're physiologically changed. And I, I can understand that. You know, it doesn't matter what people say about you. In your mind, in your life, and your 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 beliefs you're male and you feel comfortable as a male you didn't force your your uh, sexual orientation on your family or your friends this is something you chose and this is to you know you you chose to come out and and live that type of life but i don't think you chose to be this way this is just your natural calling and, and yeah and that's what we're, we're comparing it to there's people out there who do that and that's not their calling they'll they'll pre like guys in particular they'll pretend to be women and then they'll go into the women's restroom or they'll go into the women's prison or into sports and they're really not attracted to men they're attracted to women still so what would be the purpose of having a male body? You have 60 seconds remaining. Pretending to be a female attracted to females. It would make you like what, a lesbian or something? I don't know. Yeah, and that's some of the stuff we need to learn. And that's, that, that's good. And But, you know, me personally, I don't think you should learn it in school. Okay, good. Yeah, I, I will definitely get the word out. And, you know, if you want to post something, go for it. We, we need to keep this in perspective. Yes, right. The real trans people, not the fake ones. And those are the ones we need to... You have to 30 seconds remaining. ...meet out. And so uh, keep fighting that fight. Keep doing what you do best. And we'll do what we can out here. 
will uh, will expose the frauds and um, get you guys the uh, proper respect and uh, treatment that you need. Good, good. Okay, take care of yourself and don't be a stranger. Give me a call and we'll continue our discussion on these things. Thank you for using Inmate Call. Well, hello. My name is Joel Wilborn, and this is AQS Inmate Call. I thank you for joining me today, and, and hopefully uh, we can start some discussion with family, friends, community folks. And this one, this is something that I've discussed before, but it's not necessarily about the transgender community. I've, when there's something that I don't quite understand, I dive into it and try to do some research, particularly talk to folks and uh, ask questions. And the transgender community has been a mystery from, of mine because I, it's not something that's really affected me in my life. I don't associate with the transgender and so if that's what they want to do they keep to themselves and me being an introvert anyway I keep to myself and I don't express my uh, sexual orientation to anybody and I don't ask anybody about it but if somebody wants to talk to me I'm open for that especially if it's something I don't know much about and uh, when this community reached out to me it sparked my curiosity and so I start asking questions and that's because this is something that we wanted to do we wanted to open a discussion and the big thing that I've noticed about this is there are fake people out there people who are pretending to be gay lesbian I know uh, on my um, YouTube channel I talked about a little thing that was uh, you know straight out the gate type thing where folks would go in and take on the role of being a lesbian or a gay man or something only to get that kind of love and affection and attention and, and the physical contact but then get out and just go back to their normal straight ways kind of a weird thing to do but hey you know who am I to argue and if people are willing to participate oh well it's not illegal and uh, but when I hear people who are in the trans community and they're talking about folks that are pretending that bothers me because we have an issue there in a way we should make that a crime you know if a person goes into prison with the uh, I guess the desire to be with the folks that they are attracted to you know like a male pretending to be a female so he can get around a bunch of females that should be a crime because it's I I guess you could call it fraud deception you know and well we can't really say people who are trans have mental issues or anything I don't think there's anything wrong with them that's just the way they're they are and a lot of them they 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 go through a lot of uh, questioning a lot of uh, doubt a lot of and you know trying to figure out what this is and that's where the family and other members of the community who can relate to them that's where they come in handy because they get to sit there and talk to these folks and uh help them decide which route they want to take and with the society it's more like if you're a trans or if you're gay you're a bad person you know this this young person is sitting there thinking I don't want to be despised by society but deep down inside this person feels that way and I believe there should be outlets for that I believe there should be community centers where folks can go and sit down and discuss these even with a, a doctor you know a doctor could sit there and talk with these folks and help them come to the proper decision we shouldn't run right out and change the sex of an eight-year-old boy but that's something that this child should not have to fear 
discussing with family members. And yeah, we're going to have people that despise folks, but let's face it, there's lesbians that don't like straight people. And there's uh, trans people who don't like uh, bisexual people. And and that's just human nature. That's just the way we're going to be. And we're just going to have to accept it. What I don't like is when people break the law. If I were to go on social media and start uh, telling people to go out and break the law, that would be wrong and I should be stopped. But if I go on social media and I discuss I don't like a certain lifestyle, you know, it could be considered racist or uh, some kind of discrimination but it's it's my freedom of speech i'm just talking and people who agree will like it people who don't will say something and that's just the way things are on social media it's not that i'm necessarily promoting facts it's just that something i'm getting something off my chest I'm, i'm discussing things opening up dialogue as well and so uh as long as we're staying within the law, we should be fine. And these people who are pretending to be trans, they may wind up doing something that's quite illegal. Now, I was told by a trans person that the straight folks really despise them because they get to choose their roommate, they get to get special treatment with the restrooms and with the dining hall and stuff. And he was telling me, or actually, this is a guy who trans to a female. So she told me that what's going on in there is that there's they're afraid that if uh, somebody that well the DOC officials are afraid if they do something to these folks. Let's say that a trans person commits an infraction and needs to be punished the trans person could put in a complaint and then they could say oh you're you're being uh, you're discriminating against this person so she was saying that this discrimination is unnecessary and it's something that's causing more problems and so it just kind of mushrooms out and, and just engulfs the entire facility So while she's thinking you're treating us bad, which is in many cases is the truth, she's got to fight it and then she's got to deal with the consequences. And that's not something we particularly want to promote, especially in a prison. She said she is not attracted to women. She doesn't care about the people she's surrounded by. She's attracted to men. And she would rather have a husband or boyfriend than a girlfriend or wife. And that's her lifestyle. That's who she is. That's fine. And she was also letting me know that the people that come in there pretending are making them look bad. So rather than treat the people who are fakes the way they need to be treated. They're treating all the the people who identify as the opposite sex in a very poor way. So, uh, you know, I, I know when it comes to gender identity, School is a is a shaky ground. There could be some states out there that say it's okay for them to teach that stuff in school. And if the families and the, the community people and the religious leaders and you know, all that stuff don't have a problem with it, that's their state. That's what they choose. But if the state does have a problem with it, then they can make that choice as well. And uh, that's why education could be changed from state to state, city to city, county to county. And I, I have no problem with that. If the, if the 
county representatives want certain items not taught in school as long as it's legal you know their decision is legal and it's not against the constitution we're fine but 100% I believe family should have a big part in that and they're the ones who should determine who their loved one talks to you know if little junior is, is have an identity crisis and is identifying as a female the family shouldn't just say no 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 and, you know i've known people like that just just fight it that's the parents right they can do that because the child isn't an adult yet but i i think a lot of family members need to be educated themselves we need to try to work on ways of getting this this out because the biggest thing is we just don't understand the more i understand about this lifestyle the easier it is for me to get on board to help these folks out because i can relate to the problems they're having i'm not 100% um in their corner because i'm not a trans person but i do understand differences of opinion different types of lifestyle different types of beliefs and I respect that that's what we need here in the United States and in order for me to throw my support in there I need to understand what's going on and with them giving me this information it's like gold it's just wonderful because when I watch debates on TV or read them in in social media it's easy for me to uh offer a rebuttal because I've spoken to the people and uh you know there's certain things that we need to concentrate on in school and I like the STEM program you know science technology engineering and math we need that stuff in school history can be flawed um religious beliefs and gender identity you know these are things that can actually be messed up in a school but science technology engineering math that's that's basic and you're going to need that no matter what and people's opinions about stuff change you know it's like we had all these interesting things about history but a few years ago they blocked stuff from history every country will block a little bit i mean the egyptians were good at that blocking things from history we need the real history and we don't want one group to look like the demon you know making the children cuz we want everybody to feel comfortable and so if you have if you're talking about slavery and they're discussing how evil the slave holders were that's the way it was back then as much as we don't like it we can't change it and we look back and their culture was based on that that's their beliefs and they were good people to live that lifestyle And so uh when we do history we should just go ahead and say this is what happened but that's the way it was back then. You know, I I like to visit cemeteries and I went to a cemetery where uh, the first female physician in the county she was buried and her headstone read wife and she was next to her ex-husband's grave. And so here I'm thinking that that's just disgusting. This woman had was had a reputation of her own and she was more famous than her husband. But at that time when she died and she was buried, that's the way things were done. And so now she has a big marker there, you know, a memorial marker and she's got a lot of accolades going on. And because we've changed And so to erase that, you know, take that tombstone off and put a tombstone on there would be kind of a slap in history's face. And they actually mentioned it in the plaque when they were uh, honoring her her grave site. So I I I promote that. I like that. And I maybe every little historical moment needs an asterisk by it so they can say, you know, this is the way they thought back then. But people got to understand that we change we grow and sometimes we go back 
things that were accepted in the 1920s may not be accepted now. But don't go changing things. I know in in, uh, my home here, there's a lot of folks that want to change names of uh, historical spots like a park or or a river. And they're saying that it's uh, disrespectful to the Native Americans. And the Native Americans are saying we don't want to change it because it's part of history. And we don't want people to forget how our people were treated. And tearing down statues and, and changing names, it it actually hides history. And I think family members, if they go to a historical spot and they're reading a plaque where uh, maybe something that was derogatory was just a popular thing, they'll explain that to them. Like, Mom, why is it like that? Well, back then, this is the way they thought. And we've changed since then. We've become better. We've learned from our mistakes. And we don't treat people like that anymore. And I think that would make the child a better person. You know, they're, they're understanding that things aren't, everything isn't perfect, uh, permanent. You know, they could hate, little, little girl could hate boys and then grow out of it and marry a boy or find out that she feels better in a male body but this is something that that's our growing process this is who we are and we shouldn't degrade the family for something like that society doesn't dictate our our personal life and we shouldn't look to society to teach us because as we look at history those things that haven't been erased a lot of times we grow out of that stuff and so I'm hoping that in the penal system we can find out that if there's certain activity going on you know if there's a trans going after women in a woman's prison we need to look at that and lawsuits as well because if this person says oh I'm a female and I identify as a female and I'm going to sue you the court should look at it and think you know if that was the case you're not acting like it you're not presenting that and psychiatrists are saying that you're not leaning toward the female that you're just the con so uh, I think we need to at least open up the dialogue let's not run away from it let's not hide and let's certainly not judge there are real trans people out there and they are not a danger they really do want to identify as the opposite sex because that's the way they think that's the way they want to dress that's the way they want to live their life they'll go to prison like that they'll come out like that but then there's others if you look at their history they're definitely fake and the fake people is a problem so I wouldn't go out and say trans people shouldn't be performing these duties or serving in these these institutions the fake people they're the problem so if uh, if a person is genuine we need to show some respect and gender really shouldn't matter that much in public you know I'm not going to go walking around with a t-shirt on that's a certain flag color or something that identifies me as straight it, it, it shouldn't matter there are times it does like in medical profession it does but you know out on the street it doesn't and I know there were many times people asked me to send them a picture of a, a gay flag the, the gay pride flag or phrases from uh, people who support the uh, gay community and you know I would do that help them out and they like to display that put it on a wallpaper or something but it's not something that they would that they're trying to sh- shove down people's throat it's more or less like this is my lifestyle this is what I choose and this is America that's what we should be doing people have a right to express their feelings and um it shouldn't be a big issue, especially in school. So I think the community should be allowed to do that. The families definitely should be involved in that. And I think we just need to listen. 
let's just get out and talk to folks and, and ask questions and listen. Let's get the answers that we're looking for. Well, I want to thank you for joining me today. And uh, hopefully you'll be able to discuss these issues with your family. And uh, we can all live together in harmony because uh, we're on this planet together, whether we like it or not. And history is important, but understanding, I think that's, uh, that's the key. So go out and have yourself a wonderful day and make beautiful memories for tomorrow.